Now within this antimicrobials, now let me discuss the factors affecting the choice of an antimicrobial agent. Right, factors affecting the choice of right factors affecting the choice of antimicrobial agent. Now, first and foremost, let me discuss about the age. So if you take the age, some of the group of antibiotics, they are not indicated in children. Some of the antibiotics not indicated in elderly. Now let me tell you some of the examples. If you take the chloramphenicol, chloramphenicol should not be given in a newborn baby. Why? It can cause what is called as the grey baby syndrome. Okay. So chloramphenicol. Remember, in case of newborn, it will cause grey baby syndrome. All right. Next, apart from this chloramphenicol, let me talk about the sulfonamides. Right, let me talk about the sulfonamides. If you take sulfonamides, in newborn if you give sulfonamides, remember they will cause carnectors. Right, sulfonamides in newborn they will cause the carnectors. All right, next. The other thing is you take aminoglycosides. The half-life of aminoglycosides is prolonged in elderly individuals. So remember, in elderly patients, the half-life of aminoglycosides Right? The half-life of amino glycosides in elderly individuals, they are prolonged. Alright? Next. We have another group of antibiotics called tetracyclines. Tetracyclines, they are completely contraindicated in children below 6 years. Why? Because it accumulates in the developing teeth and bone. Okay? So, tetracyclines... Remember... They are contraindicated in children less than 6 years. Why? Because they start accumulating in the right, they start accumulating in the teeth and bone. Okay. So this is about the age. This is one of the factors which affects the choice of antimicrobial agent. So remember chloramphenicol in newborn it will cause grey baby syndrome, sulfonamides in newborn will cause carnectorus. In elderly individuals the half-life of aminoglycosides is prolonged. The tetracyclines they are contraindicated in children less than 6 years because it accumulates in the developing teeth and as well as bone. Next, the other thing is pregnancy. Right, pregnancy. If you take pregnancy, remember all antibiotics, right? Remember all antibiotics, they pose risk to the fetus when used in pregnancy. Remember this point, right? All antibiotics, they pose risk to the fetus when used in pregnancy, right? But which are the antibiotics which are safe? Penicillins, 
most of the cephalosporins macrolides they appear safe in pregnancy okay so the one which are safe in pregnancy is penicillins most of the cephalosporins and the other group is your macrolides right the other group is macrolides so they appear to be safe in pregnancy all right next next the third one the third factor is impaired host defenses right impaired host defenses remember in case of immunocompromised patients this will be the multiple choice question right in case of the immunocompromised patients bactericidal drugs are must right this is a very important point so bactericidal drug is must see in immunocompromised patients we don't want bacteriostatic drugs we want bactericidal drugs bactericidal drugs are those drugs which will kill the organism why because in immunocompromised individuals already the immunity of the individual is very much suppressed now the antibiotic even though it will suppress the microorganism growth that is bacteriostatic drugs even though they suppress the microorganism growth but in immunocompromised patients even though they suppress the growth of the organism the organism can show its activity even in the suppressed state in immunocompromised patients so what i want in the immunocompromised patient is the killing of the organism that is the bactericidal drugs are must in those individuals wherever there is impaired host defenses right so these are some of the factors affecting the choice of antimicrobial agents we have some more let me discuss so one is the age pregnancy remember all the antibiotics they pose risk to the fetus but the one which are safe in pregnancy are penicillins most of the cephalosporins and macrolides and those individuals with impaired host defenses right the bactericidal drugs are must now let me tell you what are those antibiotics which are contraindicated in renal failure and what are the antibiotics which are contraindicated in liver failure now let me tell you the drugs which have to be contraindicated in case of renal disease remember there are certain group of drugs which are contraindicated right contraindicated in renal failure now what are those group of antibiotics number 1 we have the cephaloridin which is contraindicated next we have nitrofurantoin which is contraindicated then we have nalidixic acid which is contraindicated next we have tetracycline which is contraindicated the exception is doxycycline doxycycline is not contraindicated right whereas the other antibiotics like cephaloridin nitrofurantoin nalidixic acid tetracyclines these are contraindicated in renal failure next we have another group of drugs where the dose of the drug should be reduced in renal failure right the dose of the drug should be reduced in renal failure now what are those antibiotics remember aminoglycosides amphotericin b vancomycin and then ethambutol these drugs the dose of the drug should be reduced so aminoglycosides amphotericin b vancomycin ethambutol these dosages of the drug should be reduced in renal failure okay next remember one very very important point penicillins and rifampicin do not require dose adjustment in renal disease right a point is the penicillin and rifampicin do not require dose adjustment in renal disease next now let me tell you 
in case of liver failure remember there are certain antibiotics which are metabolized within the liver some of the antibiotics they are contraindicated right some of the antibiotics are contraindicated in liver failure the antibiotics contraindicated in liver failure are erythromycin tetracycline pyrazinamide and then we have p floxacin so these are contraindicated in liver failure so remember erythromycin tetracycline pyrazinamide and p floxacin they are contraindicated in liver failure now there are certain antibiotics where the dosages of the drug have to be reduced in case of liver failure right the dosages of the drug should be reduced the examples are chloramphenicol isoniazid rifampicin and clindamycin these drugs the dose should be reduced in case of liver failure right so this is about the antibiotic usage in case of liver failure now let me tell you there are certain antimicrobials this will be asked as a multiple choice question right there are certain antimicrobials which are secreted in the bile the antimicrobial secreted in the bile are number 1 penicillins that is ampicillin and nafcillin is secreted in the bile then we have cephalosporins secreted in the bile that is ceftriaxone and cefepirazone which are cephalosporins they are secreted in the bile next the other antibiotics which are secreted in the bile are doxycycline rifampicin and erythromycin these are the antibiotics they are secreted in bile now the other one is the genetic factors right the other one is the genetic factors which will affect the choice of the drug now there are certain antimicrobials antimicrobials producing hemolysis in g6pd deficiency patients right there are certain antimicrobials which will produce hemolysis in glucose 6 phosphate deficiency patients in g6pd deficiency now what are those antimicrobials which will cause hemolysis in g6pd deficiency patients are the antimicrobials include primaquin chloroquine quinine chloramphenicol nitrofurantoin fluoroquinolones dapsone and sulfonamide remember these are the antimicrobials which will produce hemolysis in g6pd deficiency patients so this is completely about the factors affecting the choice of antimicrobial drug